Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. We pray for your power and your grace to lead us in Jesus' name. Amen. This is day five. Elijah expelled from the camp. Where are the men? And what is the cost, the ultimate cost of the spirit of Elijah? I want to welcome you all in a special way as we go through this presentation, my brothers and sisters, and to those who are joining us for the first time. May the Lord truly bless you. I encourage you to revisit, uh, to visit uh, the presentations that we have done in this series today. This is the fifth of uh, the eight series presentation on the Elijah in the camp. But today, Elijah has been expelled from the camp. Now, the question is, brother and sister, why was Elijah hated so much? Why was Elijah expelled from the camp? What was the problem with the message of Elijah? Was it the message of Elijah or the listeners of the message? Now, what do people prefer today? What kind of preachers do you want to listen to? Now, the question is, do we still have men, real men, to challenge the status quo of what is happening in the church? Do we have a crisis of preachers today? The question is, who, are on the, who is on the guest list of the camp meeting? Brothers and sisters, Education, page 57, say the greatest wonder of the world is the wonder of men. The question is, are all men dead? Where have men gone to? What is the problem is with men? Why is there a crisis of men in the world today? I see there are quite a lot of us wearing trousers. I see the, uh, there are quite a lot of us with the title Mr. I see there are quite a lot of us with the title say, but where are these ministers today? Where is the man? Now he says, men who will not be bought nor sold, men who in their innermost are true and honest, men who do not fear to call sin by its right name. Men whose conscience is as true to duty as the needle is to the poor. Men who stand for the right though the heavens fall. What is the cost? of standing for the right. Now there is a need and there is a crisis of men who can stand to, true to duty as the needle is to the poor. There is a crisis of men who can call sin by its rightful name. But brothers and sisters, there is a price for everything. And the Bible says, in fact, inspiration says, the greatest one is the one of men who cannot be bought nor sold. Today, men have a price. Preachers can be bought. Preachers can be sold. Preachers can be hired. The question is, how much do you have in your pocket? You can determine the message that you want to hear. Brothers and sisters, there is a price on the head of these preachers. Preachers have a price. You need to make a choice of what you want to do, for there is a price. Preachers are bought, preachers are sold. And it is unfortunate, brothers and sisters, that I'm talking to you today as a preacher and I know for sure what is happening in the preaching industry because there is a, there is a price. But God is looking for men who cannot be bought nor sold. Men with the spirit of Elijah. Now understand, brothers and sisters, when we read from the book Patriarchs and Prophets and Kings, page 119, it talks of Elijah as a man of faith and prayer. And his mission was to check the rapid growth of apostasy in Israel. The question is, brothers and sisters, do we still have a pre preachers? Who can check the rapid growth of apostasy in the church of God? Who cannot, who do not fear to call sin by its rightful name? You know, Elijah lives in a very difficult time. The question is, what were the conditions during the time of Elijah? Are we still in the same conditions today? Let me take you to the book of 1 Kings chapter 16 from verse 29. The Bible says, and in the third and eighth year of Asa, king of Judah, became Ahab, the son of Omri, to reign over Israel. And Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned over Israel in Samaria twenty and two years. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. I want you to understand something important here. Ahab was the king. Ahab was to lead worship. 
Ahab was leading the nation of Israel. Therefore, it was not expected for the king to behave this way. It was not expected for the king to walk in the sins of those who were before him. Now, verse 31 says, And it came to pass, as it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nahab, Nabat, that he took to himself, he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ithabel, king of the Zidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. So these were the activities which Ahab did. He did evil in the sight of the Lord. As if it was a light thing, he is supposed to be leading worship. He is supposed to be directing people to God, but he is the one who was directing in misbehaving, directing in rebellion, directing in apostasy. Imagine, brothers and sisters, if we have a leader who is leading in apostasy, if we have a leader who is leading in misbehaving, if we have a leader who is leading in rebellion, and this is what was happening in the church of God. Remember what we covered a few days ago, that Israel was the church of God, and this was the church of God, and this church of God was being led by Ahab, who was possessed by the demon of apostasy and rebellion. And what else did he do? Verse 32. And he laid up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. So now Ahab did not only rebel, he married Jezebel. And then he read an altar for Baal in Samaria, in the place where there was a, supposed to be a sanctuary of God, in the place where there was supposed to be a synagogue of God. He decided to ensure that that place is dedicated to rebellion. That place is dedicated to the worship of Baal. The question is, can anybody challenge Ahab? Remember, he was a king. Now verse 33, the Bible says, And Ahab made a groove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. So he did everything to provoke the God of Israel to anger. Is it a light thing to rebel against God? Is it a light thing to go against the spiritual prophecy? Is it a light thing to go against the commandments of God? Is it a light thing to disregard inspiration? Is it a light thing to invite the pagans to come and address the camp meeting? Is it a light thing to invite the Pentecostal musicians, the musicians of the world, to come and address the church of God? Is it a light thing on a holy convocation to disregard all that is written, to sacrifice principle. Is it a light thing to participate in the corruption of the world while we still have the name the children of God? Is it really a light thing? Inspiration says, prophets and kings, Ab was weak in moral power. He was a king, he was a leader, but he was weak in moral power. Do we have such leaders today, weak in moral power? They are supposed to be administering the camp of God. They are supposed to be administering the church of God, but they are weak in moral power. In addition to that, we are told that his union by marriage with an idolatrous woman of decided character and positive temperament resulted disastrously both to himself and the nation, unprincipled and with no high standard for right doing. His character was easily molded by the determined spirit of Jezebel. There are many of us today who are leaders, but who are molded by the people that were leading. Yes, we're leading, but we are being led from behind. People are dictating what to do. You try to wonder what really is the reason of you having, being, having somebody being a leader, but the leader cannot make decision. The leader cannot say anything. He is told what to do. 
Do we have such leaders today like Ahab? Unprincipled, with no principles, with no regard for the high standard of God. Do we have preachers like Ahab today? They don't care. What's important is to do what people say. You know, you hear these leaders, when they are campaigning to be leaders, they say, we just do what people want us to do. That's our job. They say, you are a puppet. We just do what members want to do, us to do. You are a puppet. You are not a leader. Of course, members have a paycheck. They'll give you a bit of money to rebel against God. They'll give you a bit of money. Remember, the wages you are receiving is the wages of sin. But, brothers and sisters, because of the failure of the leadership of Ahab, empowered by Jezebel, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Israel, was led into apostasy. Prophets and Kings 115 says, The dark shadow of apostasy covered the whole land. Images of Balaam and Ashtoreth were everywhere to be seen. The dark shadow of apostasy, it covered the entire land. Can we see that in the church of God today? Listen to the music. Look at the dressing. Listen to the preaching. Look at the pots when they are cooking. The dark shadow of apostasy has covered the camp of God. He has covered the children of God. But now the question is, brothers and sisters, remember Elijah has been expelled from the camp. Who can challenge the practices which are happening in church today? Who are willing to accept or who are willing to engage in these things today? To denounce and rebuke the sin. The question is, brothers and sisters, as members in the church, are we willing to accept the preachers who rebuke sin? Are we willing to accept those who have a message of Elijah to press back the tide of evil? Now the question is, why was Elijah hated? They even called him a troubler of Israel. Israel was not prepared for somebody to challenge their sin. Israel was not prepared for somebody to challenge the status quo. Is the church of God prepared today? The king was offended by Elijah. Are you also not offended by the present truth? Are you not offend, also not offended by the preacher? But Elijah was expelled. And now listen to, the, uh, to 1 Kings chapter 8 and 17. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. In other words, Ahab was saying, Leave us alone. We don't really care about the commandments of God. Leave us alone. Do you know, brothers and sisters, when you go to Matthew chapter 23, when Jesus has finished pronouncing those woes, he said to the Pharisees, to the Jews who were listening to him, to him in the temple, your house is left unto you desolate. Can God leave the church that he loved? Can God forsake the congregation of his children? As Jesus did, he can do it again. God cannot force people to obey him. People make a choice. God can not force you to keep his commandments. So now Ahab is saying to Elijah, we don't want to keep those commandments. We want to do what we want. And you are troubling us because you are forcing us to do what we want. Brothers and sisters, now look at verse 19. Now therefore send and gather. This is Elijah now commanding the king. Now therefore send and gather to, uh, to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal. 
450 and the prophets of groove 400 which eat at Jezebel's table. They were paid, these prophets, so they were to be called to come to Mount Carmel. I want to say something interesting, brothers and sisters. The prophets that are paid, the preachers that are paid, they are paid to do what the church wants. They are paid to do what the members want. Therefore, are they not captured? The prophets of Baal who ate on Jezebel's table were captured. And it's said today, brothers and sisters, today some preachers have been captured. Today some pastors have been captured. You are paid to prophesy. You are paid to preach. Therefore, you need to preach according to the amount that you receive. Because if you preach something that offends the one who is paying you, you are in problem, blood sisters. You find yourself in a very different place altogether. Therefore, you need to do what the paymaster wants you to do. Captured preachers. Captured teachers. Captured pastors. Remember, brothers and sisters, it was Jebel's, Jezebel who was now in charge. Jezebel was controlling everything. The church captured. Do you know, one of the things I've realized in the preaching of the gospel, brothers and sisters, I'm speaking this from my heart. The worst thing that you can do is, uh, as a preacher is not to have resources. And uh, you depend upon members. And members will tell you what to do. And they will tell you that if you don't do it, we're not going to pay you. Brothers and sisters, that's a very hard thing. Individuals, people, members can control you and tell you what to preach. But not with Elijah. Not with Elijah. Now the Bible says in the book of First Kings chapter 21, 17, And the word of the Lord come. To Elijah the Tishbite saying, Arise and go down to meet Ahab king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, whether he, whither he is gone down to possess it. So the men went down, and thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus says the Lord, Hast thou killed, and also taken possession? And thou shalt thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus says the Lord of the Lord. In the place where dogs lick the blood of Naboth, shall dogs lick thy blood, even thine? And Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? And he answered, I found thee because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Elijah had become an enemy to those who were in rebellion like Ahab. Ahab was assisted by Jezebel to murder Naboth. He murdered Naboth because of his zinead. He was very corrupt. He was a thief. He was a murderer. He was a worshiper of idol. By the way, his probation had closed now. There was need for somebody to approach him. And the one who could do that was Elijah. I want to ask myself a question and let me ask this question as well if you want this question as well. Are you prepared to confront the evil that is happening in the church? Are you not afraid that they will avoid you if you confront the evil? They will remove you from their preaching rota if you confront the evil. For that reason you'll be quiet as if nothing is happening. What has God called you for? Remember, the greatest want of the world is the want of men. Where are the men today who can confront this evil? Where are the men today who are not worried about the payment from members? Where are the men today who are not concerned about what people say but what God says? Where are the men today who can stand to defend the truth of God? Where are the men today? Brothers and sisters, because of what Ahab did, despising the counsel of God, 
leading Israel into apostasy, refusing the message of Elijah. He refused to repent and there was no message to come to him. But he was just waiting for the day he was going to die. His probation was closed while he was still the king. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, probation may be closed and you still continue to go to church when the door of mercy has been shut. But now, the men decide then, I want to go to war and fight at Ramoth Gilead. But he decided not to do it on himself. He decided to go and do it with his son-in-law. A very sad development. Second Corinthians chapter 18, verse 3, the Bible says, And Ahab, king of Israel, said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Will thou go with me to Ramoth Gilead? And he answered him, I am as thou art, and my people as thy people, and we, are, we will be with thee in the war. Ahab want to go to war, to fight at Ramoth Gilead. He is talking to Jehoshaphat, the king of Israel. Now follow this. And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of uh, at the word of the Lord today. Ha, ah, very interesting. Jehoshaphat feared God. And Jehoshaphat could not do anything without consulting God. But he did a very foolish thing. Because he consented his mar the marriage of his son to Ahab's daughter. Now, this relationship was very, very bad. It was contrary to the principles of God. And the results were disastrous. Their decisions that we do today, they would affect us 20 years, 30 years, 40 years down the line when we are forgotten. Prophets and Kings 192 says, Some years after coming to the throne, Jehoshaphat, now in the height of his prosperity, consented to the marriage of his son Joram to Athaliah, daughter of Ahab and Ethabel. By this union there was formed between the kingdoms of Judah and Israel an alliance which was not in the order of God, which in a time of crisis brought disaster to the king and to many of his subjects. In the time of crisis, that relationship brought disaster. My brothers and sisters, we cannot just consent to marriages of our children. When we know that they are marrying something, somebody who is an unbeliever, we cannot just consent to something because we like it. When it's against the principles of God. The Bible says in the book of 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16, And what concord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. How are we mixing the two? A believer and an unbeliever and we consent to those marriages and then we consent to go and celebrate so now because of that failure of Jehoshaphat as he consented for the marriage of his son Joram to Athalia the daughter of uh, Jezebel and Ahab the man was now in problem Ahab want to go to war and say, can you go to war with me? And he say, oh yes, let's go to war. But now let's just inquire from the prophet. He is talking to somebody who has been rejected by God. He is talking to somebody who has actually decided that he will rebel against God. He doesn't want to hear nothing about God. So as he requested that, let's ask God. Ahab decided to bring his prophets. Now look at this. Second Corinthians, Second Chronicles chapter 18, verse 5. Therefore the king of Israel gathered together of the prophets 400 men and said unto them, Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to Bethel, or shall I, I forbear? And they say, Go out for God who deliver it unto the king's end. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord beside that we may inquire of him? What was the problem of these prophets? 
They were paid to prophesy. They were to say something which the king wants to hear. The king would tell them what to preach, and they'll preach that. It is a sad experience, brothers and sisters, which is happening in church today. There are some of us preachers who are told what to preach, and the members will tell you the kind of message they want to hear. And rather than you listening to God, you are rather listening to your members. Members have become your God, for they pay you as well. Therefore, you have nothing to say. The members, they would want you to do what they want to do. As for the king, he was the master here. He was paying these prophets. They were benefiting from him. Therefore, they were to say something which he wants to hear. Are we back in the same scenario again today, brothers and sisters? Now look at verse 8. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah the son of Imla, by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. For he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. Listen. Have you ever been hated? Understand this. Ahab hated Elijah. And they chased him away. They expelled him from Samaria. They didn't want to see him. They were thirsting for his blood. Micaiah was hated by Ahab. Now, Ahab had declared war with God. He hated the truth. Now I want to ask you a question, brothers and sisters. Do we love the present truth? Or we hate the present truth? We are offended by the present truth. And when we talk, we talk as if we are talking something good. People will say, let's just lift up Jesus. Let's just lift up Jesus. What is lifting up Jesus without presenting the three angels' message? What is lifting up Jesus without denouncing sin? What is lifting up Jesus without calling sin by its rightful name? It is all in our minds. It's illusion, brothers and sisters. To those who have rejected God, they don't want their sins to be mentioned. They will tell you, we are still growing. We are on different levels. Other, they still want to remain in adultery. They still want to enjoy their movies. They still want to enjoy their fashion. They still want to enjoy their rebellion. Therefore, they don't want you to say anything about what they do. And they will tell you that if you are doing that, you are not lifting up Jesus. Let's just lift up Jesus. People will hear Jesus and repent. Brothers and sisters, Elijah has come with a message of present truth to call sin by its rightful name. Blessed are we if we take the message of God seriously and leave our sin and cleave to Jesus Christ that we may repent. We confess our sins. Brothers and sisters, I still ask a question. How is our guest list for the camp meeting? Have we chosen those preachers that tell us what we want to hear? And we, the preachers that have been chosen to preach, are we going to preach because we are paid to preach? We want to build our houses. We want to ensure that our children go to school. We want to ensure that there is food on our table. We want to ensure that we've got fuel in our cars. Therefore, I cannot say something bad to somebody who pays me. I cannot say something bad to somebody who is actually helping my family to survive. Therefore, I would rather speak what they want to hear. As for Ahab, he had long rejected God. Therefore, to him, anybody who would talk about God, anyone who would talk about the commandments of God is an enemy. And today, many of those preachers who bring the present truth to us are our enemies. Paul experienced the same thing and asked a question. In Galatians chapter 4, verse 16, Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Have we become enemies with those preachers who preach the present truth? Have we become enemies with those preachers with the spirit of Elijah? Have we become enemies with those preachers who call sin by its rightful name? Why do we hate them? Some of it is even professional jealousy. We can't do what they do. 
Therefore, we would rather hate them. We would rather avoid them. We would rather censure them. But Jesus says in the book of John chapter 15, 25, but this cometh to pass that the word, word might be fulfilled that it was it is, that is written in their in their law. They hated me without a cause. They hated me without a cause. Brothers and sisters, what is the cause of this hatred? What is the cause of our avoidance of these preachers? What really is the cause? Jesus said, they hated me without a cause. I've told them the truth. They call themselves children of God. I've given them the message of God. They rise up against me. They hated me without a cause. Why do we hate preachers? I'm asking you, brothers and sisters, why do we hate preachers? After all, where does hatred come from if it doesn't come from the devil? We hate them because we are sons and daughters of the devil and nothing else. That's why John chapter 8, 44, you are of your father, the devil, and the last of your father will do. He was a murderer, he was a liar. And that hatred is that which is in our hearts. Because we have been denounced of our sins, we are offended. But you know, Micaiah pronounced judgment. Look at this. He has been called by the messenger, so he has come. And the, that's 1 Kings chapter 22, 13. And the messenger that was gone to call Micaiah, spake unto him, saying, Behold, now the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them, and speak that which is good. Yes, so this is a prescription to what you are supposed to go and preach when you come to the congregation. When you come to the congregation, don't say things that offend people here. You need to understand the kind of the congregation which is here. This is an affluent congregation. They don't prefer this kind of thing. You offend them. They don't like it that way. They have their understanding. So speak the language they want to hear. And you know, the preachers of the day say, yeah, let's actually not offend the congregation. We grow differently. Verse 12, 14. And Micaiah said, as the Lord liveth, what the Lord said unto me, that will I speak. Brothers and sisters, I discovered that uh, there is a great blessing in speaking what God has given you than what people want to hear. Whether they like it or not, it makes no difference. If God has given you a message, you are not accountable to anyone. You are accountable to God. After all, it's only God who is heaven. Remember, the greatest one of the world is the one of man. Are they men who are still faithful to give the message which has come from God? He says, so he came to the king and the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead, Ramoth Gilead to Bethel or shall we forbear? And he, say, he answered and said, go and prosper for the Lord shall deliver it unto the hand of the king. And the king said unto him, how many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord? You know, the king knew very much that he was going against God. And as Micaiah said to him, go and prosper, the Lord will give you. He knew that cannot be true. But the question is, did he really want the truth? Now, Micaiah then decided to give him the truth. Now, look at the pronunciation. And he said in verse 17 of 1 Kings chapter 22, and he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as a sheep that had not a shepherd. And the Lord said, they have no master. Let, let them return everyone to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me but evil? Brothers and sisters, we crave for good to be said to us. We crave for preachers to lie to us. We crave for preachers to misguide us, to misdirect us. And to us, that's actually good for us. We enjoy lies. That's what it is. Even today, this is the problem that we have today. We would rather have those preachers that lie to us. We pay for them. Therefore, to them, they do according to the payment that we give them. 
and preachers love to be paid and members love to have it so listen to jeremiah chapter 5 verse 30 a wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land a horrible thing a terrible thing and what is it the prophets prophesy falsely and the priests bear rule over their means and my people love to have it so and what will ye do in the end thereof they love to have it so and that's what people want brothers and sisters Micaiah pronounced the judgment and he said, I saw Israel as a sheep without a shepherd. In other words, he was saying, you are going to die. Micaiah was imprisoned. Elijah was chased away. But brothers and sisters, let me go to the final segment with the story of the second Elijah. Because the second Elijah was imprisoned and killed. This is the cost of preaching the present truth. This is the cost of the spirit of Elijah. Verse 13, Luke chapter 3, verse 19 says, But Herod the Tetrarch, being reproved by him for Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, and for all the evils which Herod had done, added yet this above all, that he shut up John in prison. Why did he shut John in prison? Because John had said it was evil for you to take your brother's wife. It was evil for you to commit adultery. And he want to be told that. Mark chapter 6, 16. But when Herod heard, therefore, he said, It is John whom I beheaded. He is risen from the dead. John was beheaded. And what is the reason I've mentioned, but now verse 17 says, For Herod himself had sent forth and laid hold upon John and bound him in prison for Herodias' six. His brother Philip's his brother, his, his brother Philip's wife, for he had married her. Are we prepared to listen to the truth? Are we prepared for somebody? To be honest with us are we prepared for somebody to reveal the word of god to us verse 18 for johnny had said unto herod it is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife are they preachers today who can actually denounce the corruption in the church are they preachers today who can speak the against the adultery in the church are they preachers today who can speak against all these forms of apostasy that is happening in the church of God? Remember the price, just like John the Baptist. We are the men to stand for the right even though the heavens may fall. We are the men who can stand and be counted when everyone is being coward. John condemned sin and it costed his life. Have you ever condemned sin in the church leadership? And what is the cost? Have you ever come to a point where people avoid you? They don't want to see you. They don't want to associate with you. They don't want you to preach. Brothers and sisters, do you understand the cost of preaching the truth? Do you understand the cost of standing on the side of God? You know, John was killed. And as you go towards the end, many of us will be killed for standing for the truth. And the betrayers are those in church. Our real enemies are those we eat together with, just like Judas, who was the real enemy with Jesus Christ. For three and a half years, they were working together, but he was of the devil, possessed. Brothers and sisters, could John have avoided this? This is what many of us are doing. Look at this. 
Prophets and Kings, page 140. There are many professed Christians who, if they would express their real feeling, would say, what need is there of speaking so plainly? They might as well ask, why need John the Baptist have said to the Pharisees, all generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? And what was the cost? Why need he have reproved the anger of Herodias by telling Herod that it was unlawful for him to live with his brother's wife? The forerunner of Christ lost his life by his plain speaking. Why could he not have moved along with, without incurring the displeasure of those who are living in sin? That's Prophets in Kings, page 140. Just move along without incurring the displeasure of those who are in sin. Remember they are in charge. Remember they have a lot of money they can help you. Remember they are too strong. If they fight you, they overpower you. Make a choice. Do you want to be John the Baptist? Or you want to be one of those prophets who were paid by Jezebel? The choice is yours, but this is the price. Not Enoch, who was translated to heaven. Not Elijah, who, was, uh, who ascended in a chariot of fire, was greater or more honored than John the Baptist who perish alone in the dungeon. Unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. Philippians, Philippians chapter 129. And of all the gifts that heaven can bestow upon men, fellowship with Christ in his suffering is the most weightier trust and the highest honor. Desire of Ages, page 224, paragraph 5. I would rather receive the highest honor from Christ for standing for the truth. I would rather live, receive the praise of Christ than to be praised by men. I would rather worship Christ than worshiping men. Where are the men today? There is a cost, my brother. Chapter 5, verse 11 of Matthew, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all oh, manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before them. There is a great reward for standing for the truth. What do you prefer? For God calls men like Elijah, Nathan, and John the Baptist, men who bear his message with faithfulness regardless of the consequences, men who speak the truth bravely, though it call for the sacrifice of all they have. Prophets and Kings, page 142, paragraph 1. It may be a sacrifice of all that you have. Are you prepared to be chaste? Away to be avoided. Are you prepared to lose the paycheck of members and stand on the platform of truth? Are you prepared? You know, spiritual prophecy talks of John Knox in page 172. This is volume four. In Scotland, the gospel found a champion in the person of John Knox, the true hearted reformer, feared not the face of men. The fires of martyrdom blazing around him saved only to quicken his zeal to greater intensity. With the tyrant's axe held maliciously over his head, he stood his ground, striking steady blows on the right hand and on the left to demolish idolatry. Thus he kept to his purpose, praying and fighting the battles of the Lord until Scotland was free. Are you prepared? to fight the battles. Remember, God is counting on you to fight the battles in his church. God is counting on you to keep the faith. God is counting on you to live the present truth. God is counting on you. You are the man which God is looking for. Are you prepared? What is the cost? Blessed are we if we stand on the side of truth. Shall we pray? O oh Lord of mercy and compassion, the world is looking for men. There is scarcity for men. 
But Lord, in this special camp meeting, let your spirit attend us and give us grace to yield to your spirit and allow us to live on the principles of truth, not by might nor by power, but let your spirit work on our hearts to transform us, we plead with you in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you, my brothers and sisters. I look forward to see you tomorrow. Is it possible to live a perfect life so that we can be translated to heaven like Elijah? Let's join together on day six. Until then, continue to be blessed and continue to be strong in the Lord. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to share with colleagues and friends the link. God bless.